Michael Madhouse Radio, your home to everything biker, biker news and discussions of the day, and now, the Motorcycle Madhouse Mayhem Evening Show with James Hollywood Machikari, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, only on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major podcasting platforms. Bookmark Motorcycle Madhouse Radio on your favorite mobile app now. Rock on. We have ignition. Slay with the devil, die with the devil. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the show, Motorcycle Madhouse. Morning Mayhem is launching, baby. How's everybody doing? How was you guys this weekend? It is Monday, and we all know how the Mondays suck. <laughs> we have a pound rock on, hopefully, going on right now in the YouTube and Facebook uh, sphere. So, don't, again, pound rock on, baby. Uh, I have an interesting monologue today. I was watching Big Hurt over on YouTube, and he was talking about how you have to be careful when you choose your friends. And I listen a lot to Big Hurt, and I'll also watch Wes Watson, a lot of the guys that came out of the joint, uh, because those are the type of guys I actually, uh, how can I say it, can freaking relate to you know what i'm saying they've been there done it they lived the street life uh they banged they did this did that went to the joint and really had a freaking make their way a guy from the street compared to say a square or whatever you want to call them there's a lot of different mentalities that come into play A lot of street guys, and I'm not talking all of them, (laughs) because let's be real. Most of them are rat on uh, somebody in a heartbeat to get away from the time. That right there is a sad state of affairs. It used to not be like that. But nowadays it is. So the different way of thinking he really emphasized in that video. For example... I'll just use uh, square. Let's use that. They are bigger backbiters than most guys on the street. And you know why? And he explained it perfectly. They always are looking to backstab you to get what you have. This being corporate, uh, you know, getting up that corporate ladder, trying to get ahead at work. There's no sense of honor and loyalty whatsoever. And I started thinking about that, you know, and correlating it to, you know, what's going on in the biker scene. Because I've talked about this a lot and a lot lately, how bikers are interacting with each other nowadays. It. And I, you know, I basically call it, hey, the cheerleader syndrome, you know, you talk crap like a bunch of cheerleaders out of high school. It's something that I never really thought would happen. Because honor, loyalty, you know, love and respect, that was the, it was huge. But not so much nowadays. And I think it's because the different generations think a hell of a lot different than, say, my generation or the older generations uh, do. And I believe that has to do with there is less interaction between their generation than there was with ours. And what I mean is, we used to go outside, we used to, uh, you know, play with the neighborhood kids, We used to hang together, fight together, (laughs) bleed together in the neighborhood. It wasn't us sitting on the internet. It wasn't sitting on a video game talking to somebody that's, uh, say, in Australia. Their friends have now become the video game and the internet. When you don't have interaction between people, you're not going to know what respect is, what loyalty is. 
Because from their point of view, well, it's just a guy on the internet or it's a guy this and that. Uh, you know, people, you know, it gets so bad, people get pissed off when people unfriend them on Facebook. It's like, what are y'all pissed off about? It's the internet, man. That's something that I personally don't understand. So, the great divide now, where people don't understand loyalty, they don't understand respect, has made its way into the biker scene. People, and a lot of people, unless they're real close to you, they're not going to stand behind you. It wasn't like in the day where, okay, even if you didn't know this guy, he was riding a bike, it's two wheels, you guys shared something, if he's seen you in trouble... Hey, they'll stop and help. I don't know how many times, and I've seen this a lot, and you never thought this would happen. Guy on the side of the road, broke down on his bike, and of course, yeah, I'd pull over and a couple others would, but how many bikes that would just drive by, look over, not stop? I never could imagine something like that. They just leave a guy on the side of the road, leave him behind. It shouldn't matter what they ride. You know, if it's two wheels, you see him broke down on the side of the road, get over there, help him, give him a, you know, give him a cigarette, give him a freaking bottle of water or something, and uh, wait there for him if he called the freaking tow truck or see what you can do with the bike. But people don't think that way anymore. And what's even more concerning is the use of brother in this lifestyle now if you cannot even trust a so-called friend or or an associate how the hell are you going to call him brother that used to be the ultimate thing for somebody to call you as brother because you said well you know what rock on man we're in this together we think the same we are the same but now it's just thrown around like any everything. You know, it don't matter. It's funny, I was, you know, watch some of these Facebook groups doing some research and stuff. One guy's from uh, the East Coast. He's saying, yeah, brother, to a guy in Cape Town, South Africa. Don't even know each other. So why are you using that? You know, some people look at me funny uh, because... You know, when I get out and about and stuff, a lot of people recognize me. And they'll come up, hey, what's up, brother? I said, what's up, Mo? I, I don't return that favor, man. No, I don't know who the hell you are. Why are you calling me that? Why, because I ride a bike? Because you ride a bike? Because you think it's culturally cool to do that and use that? No, it's not the way it works. The biggest thing, and like Big Hurt says is, you got to watch people and see what their angle is. What angle are they using to try to get over on you? And that's a sad state of affairs in even the community now, is it seems like everybody wants to get an angle on somebody. They always want to get ahead. And I hear a lot of that with clubs. You got a lot of people that want to bang for these positions, and it's like, really? You're wearing the same club patch, right? What's the matter if somebody's a president or a freaking treasurer or secretary? You're wearing the patch your brothers supposedly, aren't you? Why are you going to try to screw one over? That's one thing I never got and never will get. Most of the time, you're not making any dough off the stuff. You're only putting money into the club. But you want to fight for a position you're not even getting paid for? I get it, people want a power trip. But is it real, your brotherhood, if you gotta get a power trip and screw over your brothers to get to the top? Because if it is, you're no damn better than what these people in the corporate world are doing. Trying to get up that ladder, boy, and they'll screw anybody and everybody they can to get there. But I think going back to the reason this is happening more in, say, Generation Z, you know, I know I always bump on the, the millennials, but, uh, you know, 
Generation Z is because they didn't have that chance to go outside, to hang with their friends, to build relationships that last a lifetime. They didn't know what it was to get your ass home when the street lights went out. They didn't get what it was to ride your bikes around the neighborhood and, you know, as you grew older, and if you're in the neighborhood that I grew up in in Chicago, defend your neighborhood. You all stuck together. So if they don't know that type of uh, stuff when they were growing up, how do you expect them to actually do it when they're adults and even if they're riding a motorcycle now. Most of what Generation Z knows about riding motorcycles and having a brotherhood has come from social media or, you know, movies and TV. They got all their info from them sources. And I, you know what, and I have to say, that's most of the age group that tries to contact me about this MC stuff, where I push them off on over to BD, because they don't understand that, yeah, you might get some freaking good pointers here and there, but you're really not going to learn anything until you actually go up to somebody and meet them. And I'm not only talking about club stuff, man. If you want to find riders and stuff to ride with, yeah, maybe a couple of these you know, local groups on Facebook would be cool. Introduce yourself and say, hey, where's your next ride? Go meet them. But it all, again, goes back to going to meet the people. You know, I know a lot of people say that social media is bad this, bad that. Well, if used right, it could be good. Because, let's be honest, that's the language the generation speaks. It was funny, the other day I was uh, telling my kid, you know, because he was asking how it was when I grew up, and, you know, I told him, well, you know, we really only had four or five stations on the TV when I was growing up. Uh, the microwave was just coming out. Uh, we didn't have cell phones. We had something called a little uh, quarter, and you had to put that in, and then you had to keep feeding that little thing quarters. But most of the time, I was out with my friends, go to the pool, go do this, go do that, screw around in the neighborhood. You know, kick the can was one of the favorite freaking uh, games that we used to play. Uh and he looked at me with a, a bewildered look on his face. He's like, you didn't have the internet? You didn't have cell phones? And I say, like, you know, later on when I got into the teenage years, years, you know, we got beepers. Well, what's a beeper? I was like, well, you know, it was this little thing you put on your side. And it would beep. You go to a pay phone and you call the number back. Uh, I have to say, I hated uh, beepers too, but, uh, you know, because you remember getting the 911s all the damn time? It was like, everybody wanted to 911 you, and you had to get to that phone, you find out they were just freaking being idiots. But anyway, the look on his face, it was like, yeah, well, that look right there showed me why it is so screwed up now. I'd hate to say it, because uh, he was... Uh, an idiot, but that uh, Ted Kaczynski, that Unabomber guy, he used to say that technology was going to destroy us. And boy, was he right. I think technology has destroyed human interaction. We don't know how to interact with each other anymore. Everybody thinks everything's based on this... Uh, information highway and it don't matter if you screw somebody over anymore that is the type of thinking I really th think is taken over it's a sad state of affairs and you would have never thought that would have happened with bikers again I would have never thought that you'd actually have motorcycles driving away Looking over and seeing somebody broken down and not stop. I never thought I'd ever see that. 
But that's just uh, the environment that we're in now. And maybe that's led to people thinking a lot different than we used to my generation and up. Because I'd get that all the time. It's like they got shock on their faces with some of the stuff I say. They're, they're like in legit shock. Well, how can you say that? <laughs> That's the first thing out of their mouth. Is like, and then I look back at them and say, dude, you need to get out and freaking live, man. You guys need to get on your bikes and go on a nice freaking co- cross country ride. Think your positions, uh, you know, experience life away from TV and the internet. More importantly, away from the freaking uh, Xbox and all that stuff. You know, I like a good game on Xbox. You know, I'm into the Medal of Honor and uh, Call of Duty and stuff like that. But I don't waste my whole damn life on the damn thing. That's what we have to get and get them away from. We got to teach these kids responsibility. We cannot let TV and the internet teach your kids or your grandkids. Because then they become all self-absorbed and they don't care about anybody else. They don't know what honor is. They don't know what respect is. Then they sure to hell don't know what loyalty is, baby. And I believe that is our fault. Because we let our kids get babysat by these technological devices. We didn't step in and say, hey, you know, enough. Well, I do, but uh, enough's enough. Get off the damn thing. Go out with and hang with your friends. How many out there who have kids see this happening? Where it's like, I know in my day, man, I used to have freaking friends over to the house all the damn time, man. It was okay. We go to this one house, sit on the stoop for a while, joke around, kid around. Then we go to the, you know, the corner store, do the same damn thing. It was a big circle, but we were all hanging together. Then when when somebody had a problem, we all were there to help. So that was beaten into me at an early age. But how many of you have kids that don't even have friends over anymore, hanging out in front of the house? All they do is talk on an Xbox game. Their actual friends are on Xbox. That's not going to teach them what they need to know getting older. And that's one of the things I got as a big problem when it comes to the school system is they also don't get these kids ready for life. The stuff that they try to push on these kids, the ideology, ain't going to help them one damn bit when they get out of school. I remember in my day, it wasn't, well, you got to go to college, go to college to be successful. No. You went to trade school, you became a welder. Or you became a plumber. Jobs that make a lot more money than a lot of freaking white collars do. But now the trade school's pushed off to the side. And what does that have to do with the subject? Well, it just has to do with what these kids are taking in as knowledge, that's how they're ending up not knowing what it means to be loyal to somebody. They come back and think, oh, well, screw him. He, you know, I don't like him. Let's unfriend him. And goes on their way. But what happens if they join a riding club or an association or a a regular MC? They don't have the ability to actually be loyal to somebody because they don't know it. Because all they think is, oh, I can unfriend them on Facebook. You know what I mean? I think, you know, it starts with us trying to teach them. But it was a great video from Herc. Uh, it's uh, his blog and stuff. It's not his main channel, the prison one, but his uh, second channel. So, but what do you guys think, man? That's my opening monologue. Sad state of affairs going on now. Sad state of affairs. Uh, we're-
we're going to get into the biker news now. We're going to be going to Australia. Yeah, they acting a fool over there, baby. A lot of news coming out with the common cheros. A lot of stuff. But uh, let us get going and let's rock it on, baby. Hey, we're going over to Nine News over in Australia, baby. Common Charles member ambushed and shot dead outside Sydney home. This by nine uh, news staff again. Let's uh, take a listen. Mid Panania Street flooded with police. A father slain outside his home. I just heard gunshots, but I thought it was further away. Police found the victim collapsed next to a white Mercedes ute on Wall Avenue. Bullet holes in his body and the car. Got woken up about 12, quarter past 12 to sirens. Um, they had blocked off the bottom of the street down here at the front of our place. Um, sort of looked out the balcony, um, saw emergency services up the top, couldn't really make out what had happened. Today, the victim identified as 49-year-old father Fares Abunaid, a known member of the Comanchero outlaw motorcycle gang who served jail time for his involvement in Sydney's deadly airport brawl in 2009. Detectives believe last night's shooting was targeted, related to an ongoing feud between the Comanchero and the Bandidos motorcycle gangs. He was ambushed um, in a fairly, I would say, a fairly cowardly, brazen way uh, by someone in the dark that he couldn't defend himself against. Detectives are reviewing CCTV footage from this street, which shows the Mercedes arriving home here last night. They're particularly interested in the car that followed minutes later. I've been advised that we're looking for a late model white SUV or wagon. Abenade was father to a six month old boy. Awful. Uh, that's uh, it's, uh, it's just, just terrible. Police issuing a stern warning for anyone who may be considering a revenge style attack. We have all the different agencies working on this. We'll be knocking on doors and knocking down doors until we find the people responsible and we remove firearms from the community and make the community safer. Grace Fitzgibbon. Wow. Uh, a lot of people ask me, well, what's the difference between what they do in Australia compared to what they do here in the United States? And the first thing I say is, oh, you can't really ask me because I don't live there. Uh, maybe you'll see some of the comments in the comments section from some of our Aussie brethren. Uh, but coming and reading a lot of what I do, it's like they're more gangster over in Australia. Uh, there's a lot more money that changes hands there. It's like, uh, how can I say it, like the 1960s and 70s here in the United States. But they take it to the extreme. Now, could that just be the way mainstream media is spinning it and that's what we're seeing over here in the United States? Yes, I can argue that could be the case. But again, it seems... Like there's a big focus on clubs over there uh, compared to, say, organized crime that we would know. You know, the syndicate, the mafia, uh, the Russians, all that stuff. Like what we know here in the United States compared to what's going on there. You know, you, know, you got a question, well, is the biker clubs over there like them? Again, I cannot tell you that because I don't live there and I don't know that stuff. Uh, so if any of my guys uh, from Australia can uh, chime in on that, let me know. Uh, but we're going to have, you know, I don't know if this was a calculated ambush and uh, retaliation to uh, another story we're going to cover. It seems like the Comancheros and the Banditos are going against each other over there, going back and forth. Uh Again, this guy was shot m multiple times. Uh, CPR wasn't going to help him. Uh, <laughs> it's not going to help him. Uh, but anyway, that from over on Nine News. Let's go to a pretty good, uh, pretty cool story here. KentuckyToday.com. And we're going to go into the next story. It'd be about the Banditos and Comancheros. A uh, redemption story from outlaw biker to living for Jesus. Living for the old man upstairs, baby. Uh, Anthony Jones, a former member of an outlaw motorcycle gang, has become a new believer and will be baptized Sunday morning at Lancaster Baptist. Besides Jones, and I'm looking at, if you're on the radio, I'm looking at a picture right here. 
uh, is uh, on the left is uh, Lancaster Associate Pastor Gary Crit. He's on the right, it looks like. Anyway, Anthony Jones was the baddest of the bad, an outlaw motorcycle gang member with the nickname Boogeyman. His marriage was on the rocks, and he was estranged from his children. He had just come home after spending 166 days in jail for breaking a man's jaw. And his life was about to change forever. Gary uh, uh, Carringer, an associate pastor at Lancaster Baptist and deacon named Eddie Woods, walked down the isolated street where Jones was living. Looking uh, back on it now, he said it was an urging from God that sent him down the road that only had about eight houses on it. Quote, People walking down the street was kind of rare, Jones said. I had just got out of jail that morning. It was that later that afternoon, about five or six, I was sitting there with a pistol besides me. Uh, yeah, pistol. We all know that one, man. Uh, anyway, uh, Jones looks the part of a motorcycle gang member. Again, this is them talking, not me. He's a six foot five, three fifty, with tattoos up and down his forearms and arms, and his hair tied in a ponytail. His arms are the size of a grown man's thigh. Uh, basically, what they do is they're talking. You know how it was coming up, how he changed. Uh, now he's walking with the man upstairs. Uh, so that is awesome. He goes on to say, seven months ago, I was buying seven hundred dollars a month a day, and now I'm getting baptized. Rock and roll, man. That's a good way to change around. Uh, hopefully it works out for you. Now, with today, Yahoo News story, and this could be in retaliation to the other thing we just seen. Uh, two men have been refused bail after facing a uh, court in connection with the murder of a bikey boss in the uh, north, uh, south, what is it, NSW Central West seven months ago. No Frank Heap 58 is charged with murdering Bandito Central West Chapter President Shane DeBritt on January 14th. Uh, Heap 58 appeared uh, at court charged with murder, possession of unregistered firearms, participating in criminal uh, group, uh, contribute to criminal activity. No bail application was made and it was formally refused. Trent James Strick, 39, was charged with accessory after the fact of murder, possession of unregistered firearms, participate uh, in a criminal group. Uh, bail was refused. So I don't know if the last story we were covering had anything to do with this one. Like I said, right now, Comancheros, Banditos going back and forth, back and forth. So again, you know, if you got questions for the Aussies, put them in the comment sections of the platform. Maybe they'll answer them for you guys. Now, let's go over this very interesting stuff. Very interesting state of affairs here. Kenosha Police Union gives its account of the Jacob Blake shooting. A 20-second video shot by a bystander doesn't show what led up to the shooting, and Wisconsin authorities have given few details. Let's see if this sucker plays here. I guess not. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, no, it's not playing. Uh, anyway, the Kenosha, Wisconsin Police Union issued a statement Friday uh, on the police shooting of Jacob Blake, an incident last Sunday that sparked protest and rioting in the city this week that led to two deaths. It's quite interesting. News is coming out. They're calling Biden a coward now because he was asked if he was going to go to Kenosha, and he said no. Well, Trump's supposed to be there Tuesday. He's going to walk right in the middle of that. You know, that's one thing you got to like about the guy. Uh, takes it on head on, but, you know, mainstream media, they'll push their narrative. Uh, uh, authorities have said Blake 29 was shot in the back seven times by Kenosha. Uh, the video of the incident shot by a bystander set off violent uh, nightly protests, including Tuesday night's uh, unrest, in which a 17-year-old from Illinois allegedly fatally shot two people and wounded a third. Uh, what's interesting about that, the way the mainstream media is uh, playing Kyle, is, well, he came from Illinois to Wisconsin. He worked there. The one, the place he was in front of, he worked there. He was actually removing graffiti the other day. And Tim Poole came out with a 
very interesting uh, statement today. If you don't listen to Tim, go over there. One of his buddies uploaded a video that's not getting any air where it was said police told, uh, you know, Kyle and his friends they're going to push the demonstrators that way and walk away. Very interesting if that does come uh, to be true. Uh, video of the incident shot by a dan Yeah, we talked about uh, Blake was armed with a knife and forcefully fought with officers, putting one of them in a headlock. That's what you don't see in the video. Uh, Brendan Matthews, an attorney for the Kenosha Professional Police Association, said state investigators, however, said Blake had a knife in his possession and it was later recovered from the floorboard of his vehicle. That's BS. You can see him running to the car with the knife in his hand. That was BS. Matthew said officers first tried unsuccessfully to subdue Blake with stun guns. Blake's lawyer claimed his client was trying to break up a domestic dispute before his arrest and he was unarmed. <laughs> the dude was on a felony warrant for sexual uh, stuff. Yeah, he, he was a Como. Uh, the police union statement added that most of accounts of the shooting were wholly inaccurate and purely fictional. And then you had uh, Governor Evers come out today because I don't know why they had him in handcuffs. You know what? You guys are morons, man. Morons. Uh, quote, the purely fictional depiction of events coming from those without direct knowledge of what actually happened occurred is incredibly harmful and provides no benefit to anyone whatsoever other than to per 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 perpetuate a misleading narrative. Mr. Blake was not unarmed. He was armed with a knife. The officers did not see the knife initially. The officers issued repeated commands for Blake to drop the knife. He did not comply. The 20-second video shot by a bystander doesn't show what led up to the shooting. And, you know, that's their side of the story right there. And one thing I know is uh, I support uh, Kyle Rittenhouse 100%, 1,000%. That kid's doing stuff that everybody else can wish for. Anyway, let's go to Corey Graff's wall of shame, baby. Baltimore cops charged with kidnapping contractor in patio re renovation dispute. Quote, you are going to give me my money back. And I'm going to give you your freedom, an officer told the contractor. By Fox News. A second uh, Baltimore officer was arrested in the kidnapping and extortion of a home contractor whose work on a patio renovation project failed to satisfy a police department colleague. Ooh, they getting gangster on him, man. Juan Diaz, 46, was charged with abusing his position. You think so? No! He is accused of helping homicide detective James Lloyd confront the contractor and get back money paid for the project. Prosecutors said Lloyd confronted the contractor on June 25th and demanded a refund, threatening to arrest him over a suspended driver's license. Yeah, they're getting gangster on them, boys. Again, quote, you're going to give me my money back and I'm going to give you your freedom. Uh, according to the documents, police said he drove the victim to the bank and ordered him to withdraw the money for a refund. Lloyd was arrested last month and charged with extorting, kidnapping, and abusing the power of his office. Wow, there you go. It's about time somebody gets something here, huh? Prosecutors said Diaz obtained $3,500 from the contractor whose name was redacted in court documents by threat of force. Yeah, Baltimore. There you go, man. There's a great freaking city. That place is freaking a third world country. Diaz is facing a felony charge punishable up to 10 years in jail and up to 1000 in fines. Both Diaz and Lloyd were suspended by the police department without pay. Meanwhile... Three other officers who are accused of being present during the confrontation have not been arrested but were reassigned to administrative duties. Baltimore Police Commissioner Michael Harrison said, 
you know, I don't, I don't know why they just don't drop a bomb on that city. That's just me, man. Anyway, Harley Davidson, what is wrong with you people? All right, that is your new rewire plan with your CEO from former Puma. Yes, he knows shoes, and he, I guess he, you're saying he knows bike. Uh, Bronx Street Fighter delayed until at least 2022. Uh it's delaying uh, the Bronx to focus on its Pan Am ad adventure, which, you know, that's a decent move. But this Bronx Street Fighter is a bad-looking bike, baby. This is going to get you that younger generation in, but again, you're going to put it on the back burner. Dummies. Back at the uh, EICMA Motorcycle Trade Show last November, Harley-Davidson surprised everyone by introducing two motorcycles that were dramatically different from anything it offered at the time. These bikes were called the Pan America, which I cannot wait to see it hit, man. I'm going to take it for a test drive. Uh, I, I am. And the Bronx, with the former being a large displacement adventure touring motorcycle in the vein of the BMW's uh, R1250GS or the Ducati uh, Multistrada 1260, and the later an upright naked uh, bike meant to take on the smaller displacement monsters from Ducati, among others. Uh, I don't think, you know, I don't think they got a chance against, you know, it's a nice looking bike. Their priorities are all messed up, baby. Uh, both bikes looked awesome and Harley seemed earnest in its plan to produce both for the 2020 model. But here they go. Blame it on the pandemic happened and things took a turn for the worse now according to a report published recently by motorcycle.com harley won't debut the bronx in 2021 or 2021 at all uh does that mean it's dead harley isn't telling of course they're not going to tell anybody uh the representatives from harley have confirmed that while the bronx won't be happening next year the pan america has become the chief focus for the brand and that's its focus and its efforts on the launch being successful uh you know it, i really can't wait to try this bike out i want to take it for a freaking ride uh see how it handles i don't know though I think the African twin's going to kick its ass, but it's something to look forward to that Harley's going to get different out there. Uh, this makes sense given how profitable the adventure bike segment has become in the last decade. You notice how they say last decade, but Harley's just getting into it now. That just shows you the leadership that they have. Uh, and then he, they go on talking about uh, the rewire is necessary and all that good sh stuff. But anyway, they're going to focus what they're claiming on the Pan America. Let's see if they follow through with it. Because Harley Davidson really don't follow through on a lot of stuff. So we're going to go into uh, my final thoughts right after this break. This is Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay, welcome back to the show, baby. It's a rocking day on a Monday, let me tell ya. Oh, man, did I already get going with a wake and bake this morning, man? We got some bio Jesus on the tap today. Uh, I think I'm with that new show. I'm going to be, you know, testing out the different 420s and, you know, giving some growing tips here and there, you know. I, I You know what? I do have a green thumb. That's what I will tell you on that one. Boy, do I love seeing them babies rise. You know, it's an actual hobby of mine. You know, I got to say that. It's a hobby. I just like stuff that's green. <laughs> anyway, you know what I want at first, before I get to my final thoughts, I wanted to address something uh, because you got a bunch of crazy whiners out there. Well, your titles are this. Your titles are clickbait. You know what? You know, do you guys actually ever pay attention? When I put a title up, that is what I'm talking about in the news that day. But, you know, if it has to do with clubs, okay, well, this club and that club is going to be in this news uh, segment. Not really hard. And if you actually read the description, you're going to see the order of the show. But, you know, people are too damn stupid to even look past all their BS. 
go to the description box or you know for those that don't like doing that that's in the title though that's what's going to be in the news for today that's what we'll be discussing in the show so no it's not clickbait you morons you know it's not trying to pull your arm to get you over there uh you know for those that know the station everybody knows it's biker news but you do get these freaking new jacks hey you said you were the, you know this was in the title you said, well did you watch the whole program and hear about it no you're probably one of them schmucks that said oh i thought this was going to be a national geographic or it was going to be a history channel thing that's not us you can go that gangland crap on the history channel but it's not going to be here this is what's going on in the biker scene with that said again i would like to ask my aussie friends to answer a couple of those questions are bikey clubs because they're called bikies over there you know outlaw clubs here in the united states are they the ones that you guys consider to be the mob or the outfit are they into that spear of influence in the underworld because what we're seeing here in the united states is that's what's being portrayed but guys like me and a lot of other people don't trust the mainstream media so reaching out to you guys you know maybe give us a little uh, education on the way those clubs are looked at there and another question that i get a lot is because there's different cultures around the the countries all over the continents everybody has a different culture like in canada for instance you have organization that rock an mc but you don't actually have to have a bike now i do know organizations like that you have some that deal with, with inner prison street stuff uh but do they need a bike to be in a club over there and you know it might be an ass nine question to a lot of guys here in the united states but again it's a different culture so you never know and i hear a lot of the clubs over there is it's more about the game than it is about riding and brotherhood now i have to say over there man i you know seeing some of the instagram and i guess instagram is real huge over in australia you know they cover their instagram accounts in the newspapers how big they are and by the way don't forget to go over and hit our stuff man i'm gonna try to get us to ten thousand over there so help us out pass it around uh but i see a lot of freaking uh you know some high-end mercedes going on audis they got some nice stuff man million dollar houses over there and you know even i can't say you know, there ain't doing nothing wrong i can't even say that when you got that kind of money floating around and seeing some of these busts going on they got game going on over there it's game so you know just answer that for you know your guys over across the pond for me man i'd really appreciate that uh the second story about the uh, old boy finding the old man upstairs i always love hearing that stuff man i am one that is never ashamed to say who i believe in and believe jesus christ my lord and savior baby he has got me out of some freaking jams let me tell you old man upstairs has got my highest respect and the only one i'll bow down to baby uh so that was great hearing that out of uh kentucky uh and it was interesting with this stuff going on in uh kenosha how the they they put their side out and you know what it's it's bad to say only fox news put their side out you know it wasn't covered by you know say cnn msnbc any of these other crap pot so-called media outlets i call it uh but the guy did have a knife in his hand they were trying to subdue him before that 20 second video was shot they were telling him to put the knife down you can see he had a knife in his freaking hand and on top of that he's a sex offender so you really think i'm gonna give any pity to him no those type of guys i'm sitting here thinking you know what you go medieval on them man medieval screw that other don't be nice don't be nice but I do find it interesting that Biden, <laughs> he ain't stopping <laughs> that coward. He's a coward, man. You got old boy over here. He's going to drop right in the middle of a freaking, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> that zone. 
<laughs> That's showing some nuts, man. But I have to say, you know, he did have nuts. He left his security behind and walked right into North Korea, too. So he's got some gojones, man. Uh, so, yeah, you haters can come on and try to rebuke that. One thing I hate, though, about you haters, you never come with facts, man. You never, ever give facts to your rebuttals. You only say what the, you, you re-spew what the media says. And that stuff, everybody can rebuke. Everybody, for everything you throw from them leftist media outlets, I can come back with a dozen type of facts, man, to prove you wrong. That's like you got some cornheads over on our Facebook page. Well, this is nothing but a Trump line. Dude, really? And you to tell they're Generation Z so-called bikers, you know? They're the ones, uh, and you know what? I'm not banging on them. The freaking, uh, the 650s, man, all tricked out and stuff. But uh, that just shows you what's coming into the biker scene is them freaks. And yes, they're freaks. Anyway, uh, it was interesting to get that side of the story. And I'm sure it's going to come out even more. Uh, you know what I really think is going to happen is uh, this country is really going to go on fire as soon as the, those cops out of Minnesota get, uh, you know, let loose. Because quite frankly, yeah, even though I, I don't really appreciate Leo all that damn much, you know, stay to your side, I'll stay to mine. Uh, they got too much evidence that that dude was freaking going to die in old D overnight, man, with all that fentanyl in his system. Uh, you know, they got uh, competing autopsy reports and all that crap. So it it's going to be interesting to see. It really is what happens. Uh, as far as the wall of shame, man, they getting gangster on people. Hey, we don't like the work you did, so you're going to pay me back. I'm going to take you to that bank, and if you don't do this, you know, welcome to Chicago, baby. Even though it wasn't in Chicago, it's Baltimore, that cesspool. That is a daily Chicago cop right there, man. That is one of the biggest reasons why I have a fucking heart on for cops and I can't stand them is because of that gangster BS right there. You know, they always, if you're doing something on the streets, yeah, you got to pay your way. That's something that's said. But they gangster you, man. It's like you're working for them. So this guy didn't like the way his porch came out. Or whatever the hell it was. So you're going to tell the guy you get in the car and this is what's going to happen. It's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out with them. <laughs> it really is. Uh, as far as the Bronx, man, it's a decent looking bike. Now, I, you know, usually I'm on uh, Harley's nuts all the time stepping on them. But I'd really like to see if this is what they're truly going to do. Because that Pan American is really necessary right now to give Harley Davidson boost with uh, the younger generation. But what I did find funny was they said in the past decade this has been an ongoing thing and it took Harley a decade to catch up with the other motorcycle manufacturers. It's like they're always freaking late and then when they do get in the game, they think that Harley Davidson name is worth the price they're asking for that live wire was a flop it was a flop you know i just hope that the pan american isn't a flop because it looks it looks like a really decent bike man and everybody knows i'm not a harley only type of guy i'm not a rah rah cheerleader for harley davidson i like a lot of different makes and models of bikes if it's two wheels, I'll probably like it if it's a decent bike. Uh, and I really like to try this off-road stuff. Because they look good. You know, we used to call them Enduros back in the day. Now they're, you know, repeating history. And I think they look fun. You know, if you're into all that outdoorsy stuff like I am, you know, throw a freaking two-man tent on your backpack and just go off-roading, man. You know, I, I really enjoyed Adam Sandoval's, uh, you know, the ride that he did on the Trans-American Trail. That looked badass. That, was, that looked fun. You know, you're getting your riding in on the trails on this decent bike, uh, and then you're camping out partying. That's nothing better. That's why I love this lifestyle so much. That's why I care about it so much, is you're never going to get anything better 
than being a biker. There's so many different aspects of this lifestyle. It's not only the cruisers bikes, but you got the off-roading, you got the racetrack and on uh, flat track, all that stuff. Uh, your sport bike drag races. There's just so much that you can be involved in. That's what makes it so exciting. And what makes it even more exciting is that old uh, thinking that you had to have a Harley to be a biker. That's almost gone among the younger guys. They don't care. Actually, you know, somebody asked me about that with AMCs. And, you know, that's one of the only questions I'd ever take was... Do you think everybody should run in a Harley or an American-made bike in a motorcycle club? And I was like, no. One, you are getting rid of people that can actually be a really good brother because he's riding, say, a Yamaha or a Suzuki. And two, that way of thinking is really gone. So why give up uh, potential brothers because of what they ride? Some of them bikes that... Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, and all of them are putting out are fucking ten times better than a Harley Davidson. But God forbid, man, you guys are gonna jump on my nuts for saying that one. So it'll be interesting to see how the Pan American is. Uh, don't forget Instagram, man. Help us get uh stuff going. The links in the description box for our Instagram account. Uh, also, don't forget to get us over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and our main platforms on the radio, baby. With that, I'll talk to you guys later. You guys take care. See you on the next segment or show, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts the rock on hats are embroidered get your exclusive merchandise now rock on don't forget to go over to harleyliberty.com get all your motorcycle club news what's happening in the scene we have a new article or articles every single day over at harleyliberty.com and don't forget the sister site bikerlifestylemagazine.com if you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation Watch videos done a Motorcycle Madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. We have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms. Check out your daily biker news. Rock on. Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel. Top of the notch, all the baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!